Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the uh, Facebook Live interview with Jenny from Jenny Ram Weddings and Events. Um, we are live on Instagram and Facebook at the same time, so thank you for joining in and uh, for tuning in and we look forward to sharing some really interesting um, wedding planning in lockdown tips. So I decided to um, run a series of webinar interviews on um, social media just to try and help brides um, during this difficult time. There's so many questions, so many, um, you know, unknowns at the moment. So we just try to, um, we're just trying to give a little bit of um, help to people and just kind of answer some of those questions that are going around. And um, these will always be available. So even if um, it's not relevant to you now and your wedding hasn't been postponed or you haven't started planning a wedding, you can catch up at a later date. So welcome, Jen. Jenny, thanks for joining Hi. us. Lovely to see your lovely face. Um, so yeah, so introduce yourself. Oh, hello everyone. Thanks for joining and Amber, thanks very much for having me. It's lovely to see you as well. I haven't seen any of my supplier friends in so long, so it's really nice to see your smiley face also. Um, so for those of you that don't know me, my name is Jenny. I run Jenny Wren Wedding and Event Planning um, based here in Cornwall. I've been running my business for just over seven years. Um, we tend to plan weddings typically for couples that don't live in Cornwall. Um, so they tend to live out of the county or indeed out of the country, um, but they want to come to the Southwest. Um, so either Cornwall or Devon to get married. Quite often they have a link to the county, whether they grew up here and moved away or they love holidaying here with their family or, or whatever it is, or they just, they just want to get married somewhere beautiful. Um, so we, I can tell you a little bit about how I got into it, if you like. Um, yeah, go for it. <laughs> but I started quite a while ago, I was working at a five-star resort um, in Cornwall, and I was running their weddings there. I was there for about six years in total, um, running their weddings for about three or four of those years. Um, and I was finding we were getting lots and lots of couples that were coming down to Cornwall to get married and um, that don't live here and that wanted that kind of extra support. Um, when you work within a venue, your role is quite limited, obviously. So um, I'd done that for a while, really enjoyed it, but wanted to offer a more personal approach, I suppose, where I could help couples more and more with planning their day. Um, so I saw there was a bit of a gap in the market and decided to set up my wedding planning business and haven't looked back since. Um, I absolutely love what I do. I love the variety of what I do. I, I work at venues all over the county in the Southwest. Um, you know, one weekend we could be doing a typical English country garden wedding. The next weekend we might be planning a 60th birthday party in a field with a festival theme. You know, every, every event's different and, and that's what I love about it. And every couple is different, every client is different, and we get to meet all, all sorts of different people from all walks of life, and quite often keep in touch with them afterwards, um, and that's what I, I really enjoy about my job. Um, I like to think, with weddings in particular, I bring a couple's vision to life, so, you know, they've got all these ideas in their head of, of how they want it to look, or how they want it to feel, and and we kind of help to make that happen, to, to bring those visions to life. And, and that's what I really enjoy doing as well. I like to think that we ease the stress as well. <laughs> so quite a lot of our clients are busy working professionals. So they have really busy jobs or they might have a family with several children and, and they want this amazing wedding or, or party, but they just don't have the time and the headspace and the contacts to, to plan it. So um that's where we step in and, and do not not always the enjoyable parts of planning a wedding. You know, there's all the logistical things that are behind the scene as well. Um, and, and we deal with that so they can just enjoy the fun bits of, of planning a wedding. And we kind of handhold them through from start to finish and see it through right up until the big clear up the next day when they've all got sore heads and <laughs> don't want to be thinking <laughs> about clearing up the marquee or whatever it is. Um, We've been really lucky to work, work with some amazing clients on some breathtaking weddings um, that, you know, will hopefully be talked around the dinner table for years to come. Um, and that's our aim, really, is, is just to, to exceed our clients' expectations and give them the best day that they're going to remember for the rest of their life. Um, so yeah, I live in Cornwall, lived in Cornwall all my life. Um, I've, I've done a bit of traveling, but come back and 
I like to think we've got, you know, good local knowledge and, and our couples think um, having the kind of local feet on the ground is quite useful to them as well. So hopefully that explains it. <laughs> awesome. Sounds really good. Yeah, I wish that's one thing I'd wished I'd had on my wedding day as a wedding planner, because we ended up clearing up the night of our wedding because the venue had made a mistake with the booking and they had an exhibition in the main hall at eight in the morning so it was not the best wedding night to be honest oh bless you it's something that people don't always think about I think as well until yeah maybe the next morning and then they're like oh gosh we've got this clean up to do and I I don't want my clients to see that I just want them to remember the amazing day I don't want them to see the aftermath <laughs> yeah it's not it's not a pretty sight yeah but yeah yeah it sounds like you do some amazing things I'm sure your couples are really happy to have you and um, just leading on from that what has been your absolute favorite I know I've worked on photo shoots with you um so what has been either your favorite wedding or styled bridal shoot um or you know one of each whatever brilliant and um, so there's lots to choose from but there's definitely one that always sticks out in my mind um, whenever I get asked this question. Um, so it's at a venue called Baconic House, which I know Amber, you probably know quite well because you photographed there as well. Um, and it's for a couple, it was probably three years ago now, I think, um, called Ariko and Jamie. Um, Ariko's from Japan and Jamie is from London. Um, and they both work for Nintendo. So they were quite a cool, like creative couple. As soon as I first spoke with them on Skype we kind of clicked straight away and, and I kind of understood what it was they wanted and I knew they were going to want something quite different quite different for the style of wedding that that venue typically attracts as well so I knew we were going to have a lot of fun together um, so just a few little elements of, of the day that I really loved was um, like I said Rico is from Japan and she decided to wear a 100% silk kimono wow. for her wedding. And no one knew anything about this kimono um, apart from me and the lady who she hired it from, who was coming down to Cornwall to dress her in it because there's a certain way that it needs to be done. Um, so I was in on the secret. Her groom didn't know what she was going to wear. So there was going to be this moment when she walked down the aisle and, and he was going to see her in this wow. beautiful dress. And she did look amazing. Um, she did have a dress change later on in the day just because we were a bit worried about her dancing in a kimono that's <laughs> made of 100% silk. <laughs> um, they had a blessing actually, so they'd done the legal part beforehand and they wanted a friend to take the ceremony. So they had a blessing under the big um, blossom tree um, on the lawns of Baconic, which is incredible. And this is just something that you can't plan for, but the timing was perfect. Um, just as they were saying their vows, there was, it was a beautiful day. There was just a very light gust of wind and some of the blossoms off the tree oh. <laughs> came over them like natural confetti. Um, so that was a lovely moment. Um, what else they had? Oh, so Jamie was a really uh, enthusiastic classic motorbike fan. So him and three of his mates, the groomsmen, um, came down for Connick Drive on classic motorbikes, which they'd had brought down um, from where they lived. And just the roar of the motorbikes, you know, as they as they arrive down that. If anyone's ever been to Baconic, it's got like the longest driveway in Cornwall. And yeah. um, as they arrive for the ceremony and all the guests are sat outside waiting, that was lovely. Um, they had a Krispy Kreme wedding cake, which was wow. cool. Uh, so I had a lot of donuts that day. And um, Rico was really into ceramics. So she decided to make all of the vases for her tables. So oh she, my uh, god! Yeah, she'd been to ceramic classes for months and months and made all of these. They were all different and all individual. Um, and she actually arranged her own flowers with um, a few of her girlfriends the day before. They had a big table outside and they were all doing the flower arrangements. So I love that because it was such a personal thing mm. you know, that they incorporated. And that's, that's what I think really captures a good wedding is when you can introduce those elements of these little per personal things wherever you can and they really embrace that through every part of their wedding um but yeah like I said they were just a really fun couple to work with and we kind of understood each other and and that's the one that sticks out in my mind it wasn't necessarily the most extravagant or, or, or largest budget but it was done really well and it was that one I'll remember forever 
Oh, it sounds amazing. <laughs> wow. I love pottery. Yeah, my husband's a family are potters. And so we had some of his um, uncle's pottery for the flowers. And we had some um, favours made for some of our special people, like some little cups with the name on. And yeah, it really makes a difference kind of having that personal touch. Oh, it sounds amazing. <laughs> um, so going on to the... Um, the main reason we're here so obviously it's a really difficult time for so many brides planning their weddings and um it's been uh yeah just so busy for every type of supplier venues ourselves we've rescheduled about i don't know at least 50 weddings till 2021 or 2022 and also some towards the end of this year as well so fingers crossed for those but um how has it been for your business and what has the kind of COVID your you know COVID journey look like for you and your brides? Sure. So we typically we tend to do quite a lot of weddings in the past every year. This year we took a bit of a turn with the business and decided to do less weddings but offer full planning. So this is where we do everything right from helping them find the venue to running the day. So we had less weddings booked in um, but every wedding we did have booked in obviously had so many suppliers attached to it. Um, on average, probably somewhere between 20 and 25 wow. suppliers for each wedding. Um, so we knew we had to react quite quickly when the restrictions came in, um, knowing that dates for next year were going to get booked up very, very quickly. So we wanted to look after our clients as soon as we could. Um, contacted them all, you know, sort of as soon as we knew what was coming um, and kept corresponding with them and monitoring the situation. Um, for many of them, when it was still up in the air as to whether they were going to need to postpone or not, we'd still contact their venue and all of their suppliers and just put the feelers out about, you know, where, where we stood and dates for next year and availability. Um, in total, we had to postpone four weddings and one birthday party. Um, so again, it's not, luckily, it's not lots and lots of weddings, but like I said, a lot of um, external suppliers attached mm. to each wedding. So the first few weeks was very busy I was sat at my computer solidly oh, no. emailing and phone calls and, and just trying to tie up everyone for the for the new dates for the couples but we, we managed to do it um, and managed to get them all, all rearranged which was good um, a lot of our couples are like I mentioned before very busy so one in particular um, they were due to get married in May they were going to be our first wedding of the season and they're both doctors, so they're right on the front line, you know, working constantly. So they were our, our top priority to get them sorted out first. Um, and luckily, we managed to change theirs and, and all of the others as well. So, yeah, we just had to be really pre proactive um, and, and get on get on that as soon as we could, really, so we could give them the best possible dates that we could next year. All of the suppliers were brilliant. Um, I mean, a lot of them we've worked with before, so they wanted to kind of look after us, I suppose, and our couples as well, because we work with them a lot. All of them, thankfully, barring one photographer who was already booked for the new date, um, managed to reschedule for next year. So once we'd done that, we could kind of ease off a little bit. But um, yeah, it was manic. <laughs> it was manic those oh, first few gosh. weeks. We got through it. So. What's been the worst thing, uh, the most challenging thing for you or your and your brides during this time? I'd say, well, the worst thing for me is I just really miss weddings. Obviously, this is this is what we work for this time of year. It's my favourite time of year. It's my busiest time of year. Um, we're normally doing all of the final preparations. Um, so a lot of the planning is already done in the early part of the year, but it's just final bits and pieces. We're getting excited. We're getting excited with our couples. We've been on this journey together for sometimes a year or more. And, and you know, we're seeing it all come to fruition to that finale. Um, so that's been hard. We'd normally be packing the van, setting up the venue and, and just thriving off that buzz of all, all the hard work coming together and, and, you know, seeing the couple and, and finding that quite satisfying when you see it all come together. So it's been hard mentally, I suppose, to not have that going on. And as lovely as it is to have weekends back at this time of year, which never normally happens, <laughs> I, I'm also, you know, every weekend in the back of my mind thinking, oh, we would be here this weekend or we would be there this yeah. weekend. And, and also seeing our supplier friends as well, I suppose, um, you know, that's part of it. There's people that we work with quite often and it's it's nice to catch up. So we've, we've missed that. Um, I'd say the 
best thing for me has probably been if there's something good to take out of it is I've had time to actually work on my business rather than just in it which as I'm sure you know Amber you don't get much time to do yeah um so I've just been concentrating on social media and website updates and all of those bits and pieces um but yeah for my couples I think it's it was hard for them to get their head around the fact that they were going to need to change the date that the, probably the hardest bit is the unknown so when mm. they weren't sure whether they were going to need to postpone it or not and they were kind of sat on the fence um but as soon as they'd made that decision they felt better about it um we've got one couple that I know we're working uh, with you Amber you're the photographer for them um and they've had to postpone to 2022 so that's like two years time mm. um which has been really difficult but we had lots of calls about it and discussed it over and over again. Their wedding was going to be in June, so it, it was the right decision. Um, but as soon as they'd made that decision, our next call was much more excitable. You know, we'd, we'd made that decision, we could move on and we could think about, actually, we've got lots more time to plan now. Is there anything that we haven't thought of or anything that we can add to it? And, you know, by the time their wedding comes, everyone's going to be so ready for a party. It's, it's going to be the best wedding of the year. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a bit dangerous though, because I I only had nine weeks to plan my wedding, but I ended up buying two dresses in that time. So the poor <laughs> bride will probably, you know, there's going to be so many new collections out before 2022. She might end up um, having a whole wardrobe. <laughs> she'll probably have like five different dress changes. I know. Oh my gosh. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, so if I know loads of weddings have been rescheduled already, but um, already, but um, um, in my calendar, I've probably still got at least 20, 25 for the rest of this year. So if someone hasn't um, had to reschedule their wedding yet, and hopefully they won't have to, but what would be your main piece of advice for someone who is um, potentially going to have to reschedule their wedding? Okay. Um, so we've I can give you some advice of things that we've taken care of for our clients, but obviously other couples could take away to do themselves. Yeah. Um, so first of all, yeah, if you're kind of sat on, sat on the fence and don't know yet, contact your venue and suppliers anyway, even if you haven't made that decision yet, just to put the feelers out there and get that conversation started. Um, it's better to do that sooner rather than later, because as we all know, next year is going to be a very, very busy year for weddings, yeah. for the postponements and also the people that might have got engaged this year that will want to do it next year because because they're just so ready for it you know after everything everyone's been through I, I feel like next year is going to be really busy so do that as soon as you can um if you are going to postpone or even if you are still on the fence I would message your guests um especially for couples that are out of county that have got guests that might be traveling down or have got accommodation just give them the heads up um, you can do that. So we had one couple where their stationer um, designed a really lovely attachment to embed into the email that they sent out to oh, all of their nice. clients. So rather than just sending a text or a WhatsApp message, it matched their invites because their invites had already gone out. Um, and it just said something like, you know, we've, we've had to change the date. This is our new date. But it was, it was really pretty and it was really well done. So something like that. Um, obviously, bear in mind, if they've already RSVP'd, some of them their status might have changed now so if they couldn't make it before they might be able oh, to make yeah it. so just mentioning that on the email as well you know if they can now come or if they can't now come just to let you know and to be able to log that um and like I said if they've got accommodation booked as well just reminding them that they might need to reschedule that um, with church weddings, because um, we've had a few church weddings, the churches have all been brilliant and rescheduled, but um, some of them, the couples are having to do their residency period again. Oh. Um, so it's worth checking with the church whether they are going to, if they've already done it, whether they're going to need to do that again and scheduling that in. Um, for insurance, hopefully couples will have taken out insurance. Hopefully we always, oh, yeah. <laughs> always advise people to. <laughs> um, if they have got insurance, if there are any suppliers that can't, reschedule um, and you are going to lose your deposit ask for their invoices and their contracts because your insurance company will want all of that paperwork so it's good to just have it ready to send to them um, some suppliers might ask for another installment so if they were to postpone to next year they might ask if you could just pay another installment maybe in a few months time 
this is pretty normal and we've had a few suppliers asking for it as well not necessarily insisting but just asking because it will help with their cash flow um, it's really nice if you can do that because you want their business to be in a good position next year, obviously. Um, and from their point of view, you know, it's hit them quite hard as well. So if you can afford to do that, it's, it's a nice thing just to help keep them afloat. Um, if you've got children coming to the wedding, obviously bear in mind if you've got childcare booked that you'll need to update the ages because obviously they'll be a year older potentially or six months or whatever it is. It's a little thing, but it's something that you need to think about. Um, and then I'd say also just keep in communication with your venue and your suppliers and um, definitely consider postponing, not cancelling. Um, the wedding industry has been hit really hard and, um, you know, weddings and events have been re hit really, really hard. And the suppliers and the venues need your support just as much as you need their support. Um, we're all in the same boat and we all want the best possible outcome out of it. So just keep in communication and, and let them know, you know, what you're thinking. Um, and then I'd also say try and use your time productively. Um, so like we were talking about a minute ago, you know, adding extra things on when you've got the time. Think about those finishing touches that you might not have thought about before, um, but also very much keeping your original vision and budget mm -hmm. <laughs> in mind um, and not kind of adding things on just for the sake of it. But, you know, there might be a few things that you could add that you haven't thought of before. Now you've got the luxury of that time. Um, there's a few things that I would definitely advise working on now, if you've got lots of time at home, you know, if you're furloughed or you're not working, um, that will just make it easier when your wedding comes around. So there's lots of like little jobs that people forget to do. Um, so for example, you could work on your playlists. So for me, I play music every single day. You know, as soon as I get up and I'm in the shower, I have music playing. So it might not be relevant to everyone. Um, but if you're anything like me, you might want a playlist in the morning while you're getting ready. So you could put that together. Um, you, you might want a playlist for during the drinks reception if you don't have a live musician. So you could start thinking about that and putting it together um, for dinner and maybe for the evening if you're having a band once they've finished. It's the kind of thing that takes so much longer than you ever anticipate. So getting ahead and doing that now whilst you've got time on your hands makes sense. Um, working on your table plan so my couples always tell me this is the hardest part of planning a wedding and it's something that I can't really help that much with because obviously I don't know their guests <laughs> so you could start um drafting your table plan and, and and getting the dietary requirements and bits and pieces like that together ready for your caterer just so it's one less thing that you have to do later down the line um photography list um so we always advise not to make it too lengthy as I'm mm. sure you do as well Amber yeah. <laughs> um but just yeah any photos we normally say about half a dozen is plenty um that you might want and then lastly I thought maybe if um if you were quite a creative person or you wanted to become a creative person um working on wedding favors um so as people have got all this time at home and they might want to do something creative just to make them feel good or lift their spirits at this time um, there's loads of amazing ideas for wedding favors online i made my own wedding favors actually a few years ago we made um bath bombs for the lady oh, wow. <laughs> and um little bird feeders for the guys Aww. so but it was a really fun thing to do and it's the kind of thing that in everyday life like you just wouldn't get the time to do it necessarily or you'd be doing it late in the evenings and you wouldn't necessarily enjoy it whereas if you've got all this time um it's just a nice nice thing to do um yeah and then i'd say probably the biggest piece of advice to those that are having to postpone or thinking that they might need to is just don't don't get too disheartened i know it's really hard um but and i'm gonna shamefully i took some of the wording from the lovely lady that runs cornwall childcare <laughs> she put up a post and it kind of inspired me to um write something of my own but it was i just thought it was really nice so um it was your day will come, you will wear that dress, you will walk down the aisle to your love, you will dance until you can't stand up, <laughs> you will cry at their speech and your face will hurt from smiling. You'll have that day you've been dreaming of and planned for years, although it might not happen now, it will happen later and it will be amazing. And I just think that's so true. Oh, yeah. And people will be so ready for a party. So just try and yeah, not, not let it dishearten you and just you will get excited for your wedding again is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> oh, 
Yeah, it's so hard. We've had some really, really upset brides who just didn't, you know, they were just in tears literally as soon as they heard and it's just really awful. Um, but yeah, we've had lots of people who um, have been doing their paperwork, which is great. Um, so they've been sending through stuff and going through all the final details. And so we've had quite a bit of that sent through and some extra phone calls and things with brides. And we've also had a few people who really wanted to have videography, but didn't have the budget, but now they've got an extra year they've added on videography wow. so yeah. so that's a bonus for them because it's something that they really wanted and now they they obviously they've just got a little bit of extra time to kind of save up for it so that's really good um mm -hmm. but we have had some couples who have had to cancel their weddings because they just can't afford it and their circumstances have changed so they've had to um you know cancel their weddings in lockdown and just do something really small for the moment so Sure. It's been a bit sad for a number of reasons. But yeah, some really great tips there. Thank you, Jenny. You're welcome. Um, and you wrote a blog about that as well, didn't you? Was it a blog post about yeah. wedding planning? Yeah. yeah. So um, I'll share the link to that in the show notes after. So if you want to catch up um, and make some notes on that, um, I'll share that with you in a bit. So um, when lockdown is lifted, obviously we don't know what that will be, but what um, – would you say um, kind of your next steps and then for couples as well, you know, what, how can they use that time? Because I'm sure everyone is just going to be rushing to um, either, yeah, um, get married in some way or another. Cause I know that um, church weddings are going to have to open soon because, or well, just all weddings legally, because there's so many reasons that people have to get married um, or that they want to get married. And it's not just, you know, just to have a, a pretty wedding, you know, there's some really serious reasons. Um, but what would you say, um, you know, good advice for people to do once they, um, once lockdown is lifted, whether that's fully or partially? Sure. So for our couples, obviously, a lot of the planning has already been done for this year's wedding. So we've kind of got them to a stage now where we're going to park it and then pick it up again later in the year and then start doing all the final bits and pieces. Um, for new couples, I would say, well, once lockdown's lifted, you'll obviously hopefully be able to go and visit your venues again. Yeah. I know some venues are um, opening up already or in the next few weeks and they're being quite vigilant about it so there's a couple of venues that we need to go and see for our clients and they've sort of sent out um, you know their regulations I guess which are all COVID compliant and, and very very sensible but as, as soon as it's safe to do so you'll be able to do that up until that point a lot of venues are doing really good virtual tours online as yeah, well a few of those. Yeah, mm, really good. yeah really good videos and things like that and they'll you know they'll have videos prepared and then they'll quite often do like a Skype call or a face FaceTime call or whatever with the couples um you'll hopefully be able to go to your catering tastings having your hair and makeup trials you know all those yeah. all those lovely things we quite often do like wedding planning weekends where people will come down and do all of that so there's all of that to look forward to um but you can kind of get the plans in place ready for, for when that happens um for any sort of people that are just starting to plan i knew that was something you probably wanted me to talk about as well you can still do all of your research for your venue now so although you can't go and see it a lot of choosing your venue is is like the research and the online research until you get to the short list where you're then going to be like right I'm going to go see a b and c so I mentioned the virtual tours um just bear in mind obviously the a lot of the venues will be giving priority to the couples that are postponing first which is quite rightly so you know they're going to want to make sure that they're dealt with before they take on new bookings so there might be a slight delay before they can come back to you and say, oh, yes, we can definitely offer this date or that date. Um, but you can still gather all that information, you know, their capacity, their, um, sorry. Uh, there we go. Sorry, that was a phone call. Right. <laughs> <laughs> their capacity, um, their pricing, you know, all of those bits and pieces. You can get all of that information. That's such a big part of it. Seeing the venue is almost the easy part. Um, and supplier research as well. So although you might not be able to meet them face to face again technology these days you know you can easily set up a call clicking with your suppliers is, is, is a big thing you know it's such a personal thing having them involved in your day so making sure that you are on the same page and you like them as a person as well as liking their work so any good supplier will will happily you know set up a video call like we are now and you can chat to them face to face as, as it were um and check out their reviews. So not just the ones on their website, but their Facebook, their Google. There's lots of wedding planning forums now where people chat about, you know, who they've used for their wedding. 
Um, I know, I think it's the Art of Weddings is doing online wedding fairs at the moment, so you can still... Oh, I saw this. Yeah, they look really good. Yeah, they look really fun. So you can still do all of that, you know, that research and those bits and pieces and just trying to be as productive as you can. Um, I would say definitely ask them about their COVID-19 policy um, before you do book them and get that in writing, just in case that, you know, heaven forbid it happens again. But if there was another outbreak and we needed to postpone, just have that in writing so you've got it. Um, take out insurance. <laughs> please, please, please take out insurance if anyone takes anything away from this situation <laughs> with planning weddings. Um, take out insurance and yeah, make make the most of the time that you've got now. Like I said before, you know, get your checklist in order, get those tasks ticked off that you can do now whilst you've got the time. Um, and then when it comes, you know, to the lo lockdown being lifted, you'll then have more time to do the other enjoyable fun bits like go and try your dress on and try your tasting and, and things like that. So yeah, just try and be as organized, I guess, and as productive as you can. Great. Yeah, we, like you, have a lot of out-of-county brides, so a lot of our meetings are actually virtual anyway, whether it's FaceTime or Skype. Um, and yeah, it's just a really great way to kind of get to know them and for them to get to know and kind of ask questions and just see if you kind of get on personality-wise, because I think such a personal thing, like you, we're next to the couple, we're with them all day, you're probably with them a lot longer, but um, yeah, it's really nice when you kind of click with them and then you end up kind of um, getting to know them and then... I feel really sad when you kind of hand them their pictures and you're like, oh, I don't have any reason to contact you again. <laughs> so it's so lovely. And I think, yeah, it's really important because um, I've had lots of people that have, um, unfortunately their photographer hasn't been available, but when they actually booked them, they kind of rushed it and they thought it was the right person. But actually after getting to know them much better after they booked, they, you know, have commented that actually they wish they got to know them a bit better um, because they realised they weren't quite right for them. So it's definitely, and luckily they've been able to reschedule and have a different photographer. But um, I've heard that a couple of times. So yeah, it's really important to kind of get to know your suppliers um, and yeah, just make sure that you get on with them really, which is really important. Um, so we've had, what I'll do is I'll go through the questions that we've had from Facebook mm -hmm. and then finish off wrap up after that yeah so um yeah we had a few questions from facebook so um i know you mentioned about wedding venues but there's a lot of wedding venues especially some in cornwall some of the best wedding venues which are absolutely amazing and um, understandably they're so busy for next year they can't actually fit certain, you know not all of their weddings but they can't fit in all of their reschedules and some couples don't want to wait till 2022 so what would you um, advise people, you know, what, if this is the case for them and their wedding venue? So firstly, I would say definitely consider looking out of season. So a lot of the venues, to quite rightly say, the peak dates are going to they're going to be booked up and be the busiest time. Out of season weddings, honestly, people should open their eyes to them a bit more if they are. People tend to always think May to September, but some of our loveliest weddings have been in the winter months. So I would really look into that if you are really set on having summer wedding and um, go back to your original list, because presumably when you were looking at venues, for most people, they will have maybe shortlisted two or three at least, I would have thought. Yeah. So go back to your original list and remember what you loved about those other venues as well, because you might, it might almost be a blessing in disguise, you know, and you might book one of your other venues that were on your list that you actually now love even more. So consider that as well. Um, there are lots of new venues popping up as well. So don't just look at what's online now. Um, we got contacted last week about two brand new venues um, wow. that are opening in Cornwall. So they're in building stage at the moment. So they're not quite ready to launch. Um, but when, you know, they will be probably for, for next season. So there's lots in Cornwall and Devon, especially popping up all the time. There's a lot of um, accommodation providers, so self-catering accommodation providers that are now deciding to do weddings. Um, so it's worth keeping an eye out and, you know, chatting to other people in the industry and plan planners. Obviously, we tend to get contacted early on just for advice for, you know, venues that are starting out. So sometimes we know about venues that might not necessarily be online. Hmm. Oh, wow. It's really good. Yeah, I didn't think about new venues opening up because I imagine, you know, I've had some brides that have had their wedding booked in for two, two and a half years for this year. So obviously when they were looking then, 
there wouldn't have been the bro- the venues that are now around. Yeah, I didn't think of that. That's great advice. Um, yeah, and thinking about um, my brother was supposed to get married in May, and actually it was about twenty seven degrees in the end on the day, and it was so hot. His fiance actually said, "Do you know what? If we'd have got married today, it would have actually been." She said, "I can't believe I'm saying this, but I actually think it would have been too hot because really? they were going to have an out- outdoor ceremony." And you wouldn't have been prepared for it because you wouldn't think, oh, it's going to be 27 degrees today. Like, you know, you know, you're in Spain or something. So, yeah. And um, so, yeah, they were actually well, they were still really sad they weren't getting married, but they were just thinking, whoa, it would have been a hot day. Lots of sunburn. Yeah, yeah definitely. And probably yeah. quite a lot of drunk people because they always. Oh, drink yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Out. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't have been a good combination mm-hmm. um so another question I would like to get married in the UK but live in the US when can I start looking at dates to get married so we have a couple actually that are based in LA and we're planning their wedding at the moment they've just postponed to next year um but I would just say sooner rather than later for the very reason that everywhere's getting so booked yeah. up um mm-hmm. so yeah there's no there's no need to delay like I said you can do all of the research for the venues now although you can't go and see it in person um, but yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wait. I would just jump on that as soon as you can. Okay, great. Um, so this is really sad. I really struggle with letting go of my original wedding date. Um, I tried for the same date next year, but it wasn't possible, but I feel mentally now that I have, that I've let go. Although I've pessimistically written the new date in my diary and pencil instead of pen. So this is really sad, but I just Aww. thought, um, it's not really a question, but I thought, you know, there's probably so many brides like this um, or couples. And I just wondered if you had any tips of how they can, you know, still celebrate their wedding day, because I know lots of people have picked their date because it's really meaningful. So I've captured weddings for brides that it's been like an anniversary of a loved one's death or, um, you know, it's uh, their anniversary of five years exactly when they proposed or something like that. So, you know, what advice would you give to couples to really um, make that day special, even though it's not then they can't get married oh that is really sad but at least at least she's made he or she has made that decision now and hopefully like my couples once they've made that decision they felt a lot better about it because it wasn't like the unknown um but I would celebrate embrace it and celebrate (laughs) your original date definitely so whether that's um you know cooking the meal that you were going to have for your wedding breakfast maybe or or asking if your caterer can do it and deliver it to your doorstep um, dancing around your living room to your first dance, zooming <laughs> in all of your friends and family, um, maybe even asking your florist to to deliver you a bouquet or oh, just oh that's such a good idea like that. Yeah. yeah just definitely still embrace it and celebrate it and I had a friend actually she was ma- due to get married um, last weekend I think it was and her fiance arranged for some of her friends to meet her socially distanced in a park and she had no idea and they had a bottle of champagne there and they just still made something of it you know so I think still do that rather than just kind of hide under the duvet all day thinking of what would have been and don't look at the weather (laughs) do not focus on the weather yeah yeah yeah. for my brother's wedding we um because my little baby daughter is six months old we'd bought her two really cute little outfits and I was like she's never gonna wear them so we dressed up in our wedding clothes or you know just what we we dressed her in her wedding outfit but we just put on like pretty outfits and we went and socially distanced and dropped them over a little present and things and it was so sweet I think we kind of did it because you know we wanted to do it but it was really nice and they're really touched and um Mm. yeah it was just you know I think we were we were trying to celebrate a bit more than they were but it was really Uh fun and um yeah it's really nice to kind of make it a bit special I think it was a good distraction for them anyway so yeah um okay so I'm another question I'm struggling with not being able to go to try my wedding dresses on don't get me wrong I fully support lockdown it just sucks so what advice would you have to um I know you've mentioned about suppliers and things but you know I know dresses is a hard one but what would you advise kind of with people that can't um you know do the normal kind of supplier thing I guess yeah with dresses there is no way around that at the moment um hopefully she's she's looked at lots of dresses that she wants online and shortlisted and mind you that said people quite often go in with a clear idea of what they want and then they go to a dress fitting and actually try on something that's completely different (laughs) that's what what i did yeah (laughs) yeah me too (laughs) um so yeah i think just 
Oh, it's hard. I think just like I said, do what you can now. Mm-hmm. Um, all of those exciting things, there will be a time for them. Um, maybe even, again, it's a blessing in disguise because some people get their dresses way too early. I did this as well. I got my dress too early and then I completely changed my mind um, and got another dress and sold <laughs> the other dress. So <laughs> the fact that she's got less time might be a good thing. Uh, yeah. But just remember, it's hard because wedding planning is a combination of really fun things like trying on your dress and trying the food at your catering tasting and having your hair and makeup. And they're all the fun bits. And then there's all the bits like the table plan and do we need a generator for electricity if we've got a marquee and all those boring bits. (laughs) But they are bits that need to still get done. So I suppose it's kind of what I said before, just use the time now productively to get all those boring bits done. Mm. And then just think when lockdown's lifted, you're going to have the best few months just doing all of that fun stuff. Um, But yeah, I know that doesn't really help her now, bless her. Oh, I know. I just, yeah, I, I, if it was, if it was when I was getting married, I would have been caught in lockdown and pretty much all of my wedding planning and my wedding would have been a write off really. So yeah, I do really feel for people because also if their weddings do go ahead, then they haven't had the time to do to the things that they want to. So another reason to reschedule. Um, so this one's quite hard. Um, So I live abroad, so can't get back to the UK to do the legal side notice of marriage, which I'm sure lots of people in the UK actually can't do with churches, etc. Can't meet vendors, can't do hair trial, dress alterations, etc. All of our supplies have been fantastic with changing our dates next year, but the venue seems to think our wedding of 150 may still go ahead in July. So that's a really difficult one. Um, so yeah, I don't really know what you could advise on that because well, it is really tough, isn't it's it? It's tricky. All of that. Yeah, I don't want to say one way or the other whether weddings mm. are going to happen in July. All I can say is from our experience, we have had a couple that were due to get married at the end of July. Um, they have postponed to next year. They do live in Asia, so they had a lot of people that were potentially traveling over. Oh, yeah. um, I think if it were my wedding, personally, I would want to reschedule. Mm. Um, I a big part of, of planning a wedding as well is enjoying the lead up. So enjoying those few months before and getting yeah. excited. And I can imagine at the moment, they're probably not feeling that they're just not knowing what's happening. Um, so personally, I would postpone. It's tricky though, because um, I know Amber and I were just chatting quickly before the call on where they stand with that, because if it's the couple cancelling, that might mean that the venue retains the deposit. So mm. I would have a, I would ring the venue and have a conversation with them. I wouldn't email, I'd call them or mm. set up a FaceTime call because you won't be the first couple that's yeah. thinking this as well. Um, and they have a responsibility, you know, to, to advise accordingly. So, but I would, I would take action one way or the other, or at least put the feelers out there. Do you know what they're doing about notice of marriage then? So if it is a UK wedding, do you know anything about that? Um, so I know with church weddings, um, you're needing to do your residency period again quite often. So we've, yeah, had, we've, got, yeah, we've got a couple of weddings um, for next year where they're, so they've already given notice. So no, I don't believe they've had to do that again, but that's not something we actually get involved in. We're not allowed to. Um, the couple have to do it direct so they've dealt with all of their um, reschedules with with the you know the um, giving notice and the church side of things but I know a couple of them have ha- are having to do their residency periods again wow tough especially if they're abroad as well they have to come over again then won't they oh my gosh yeah <laughs> okay so I think that's it so um so if people want to um get in touch with you um and um you know what's the best way to get in touch with you if they you know need help with their wedding planning so um well I work um pretty much every day Monday to Friday but also available on weekends so just to kind of work around people's schedules um so best way is either email which is info at jennyrens.com or you can give me a call on my mobile which is 07 684862 um, check us out on Instagram because that tends to have more up-to-date images of weddings and events that we've planned on there. Every image on the Instagram is of our own work as well. So you can get a really good feel for the types of weddings and parties we plan. Um, and my website is www.jennyrens.com. 
Great. I'll well, share. We can just set up a call like this. And just yeah, have... yeah. I'll um, I will share the links in the um show notes as well, so you can um click on those. Yeah, I love your Instagram. You've been really sharing some amazing, lovely, inspirational weddings. I'm just like, oh, I wish I'd photographed that one and that one and that oh. one. <laughs> so nice. um, I love Bucconic. It's such an amazing venue, and I love it how the weddings are so different as well. Yeah, definitely. We do a lot of Bacconic, actually. They recommend us quite a lot. It's a lovely venue and it's it's lovely because um, it's exclusive. So couples can go there and have the whole place to themselves for the weekend. That's what we love about it. Um, but we will say some of our favourite weddings have been, you know, on a clifftop um, overlooking the Cornish countryside in a marquee. So there's all different types of venues. Yeah. There's so many options out there. Um, yeah, we're very, very lucky to plan weddings in such a beautiful part of the world yay I love Cornwall I grew up in Cornwall and I'm only in Plymouth so I feel like I'm still I think I I went through my weddings and actually about 70% are actually in Cornwall so even though I'm a Devon wedding photographer I do actually photograph loads in Cornwall so yeah I feel very blessed as well so um very exciting news you're having a little baby uh-huh. going the baby yes. club um, so yeah you. tell us a little bit about that this is probably the biggest event of my life exciting. Um, <laughs> thank you so yes I am due in August and um, so yeah feeling quite large and hot at the moment <laughs> but no going really well um someone said to me the other day a, a guy that I know from weddings Acacia he said treat treat having a baby just like you would planning an event just be really organized plan as much as you can and then it will go out the window when they come <laughs> I thought it was quite funny um but yes we are very much still working um obviously taking a few months off we don't have a, a wedding weddings in August September it's taken a couple of months off but then back to it in October actually because we've got oh, two wow in October, so as long as they still go ahead um, but still planning. And I've, I've got a lovely lady called Maisie who's been working for me for just over three years now. Um, and she's amazing. And she's, uh, she's working for me and kind of dealing with things whilst I'll be bringing the little one into the world. Um, but yeah, can't, can't wait for next season, honestly. Can't wait for the baby, obviously. But also can't wait to get stuck back into weddings. But very much plan on, on trying to juggle the two. And I know a lot of ladies do like yourself, Amber, and other people that work in the industry and you do it very, very well. So looking forward to it. I do feel like this year it's probably been a blessing for you. But for me, I would have gone back to weddings in April, which I was really excited about. But actually, it means I've had some extra time with the baby. It would have only been the odd wedding here and there. But I do feel like I've had that extra time, but just obviously had to um do a lot more kind of phone and email contact with couples but yeah you must be um you must be a little tiny bit relieved I know it's horrible but just to be able to put your feet up and not be you know stood in 27 degrees running around for 14 hours or whatever on a day so it must be yeah wow a, a kind of tiny silver lining for you yeah definitely we would we did have quite a busy summer li- lined up as well um and a lot of my job is on the day like on the wedding day it's going to sound silly but just moving things around so it takes yeah. quite a lot of manual labor you know whether that's moving chairs from the ceremony to the reception or setting up tables moving furniture so I had a you know I had a plan I had plenty of people that were going to come and work with me and help me so I wasn't lifting and shifting um but yeah in a way if it was going to happen timing wise I guess it's worked out yeah oh are you having a boy or girl do you know having a boy oh exciting (laughs) and I bet you've found thought of names but I'm sure you're going to keep those a surprise yeah but do you know what we thought of lots of girls names before we knew girls names seem to be so easy but we're struggling with boys names so any recommendations are really welcome if anyone wants to oh yeah I found the same I had loads of girls names and boys names I just, yeah, had a very short list. Even with my daughter, I kept my eldest daughter's, I randomly found her baby name list and it was the same. I had like this many girls and then like this many boys. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, it's so exciting. Okay, well, thank you, Jenny. It's been an absolute lovely having you here and hearing all about your amazing wedding planning and lockdown tips. And um, yeah, as I said, I'll share the blog post in the show notes and... um, I'll also, um, this will be available on um, Instagram and Facebook to catch up afterwards if you haven't caught it all. But yeah, thank you so much and good luck with everything. And yeah, we look forward to um, 
catching up after the baby's been born yeah, and seeing lots you. of lovely photos thanks stay safe everyone yeah. and happy wedding planning <laughs> okay all right take care thanks Bye. Amber Bye. Bye.